Hey Frederick, how are you? Ah, I'm doing well, and how are you doing? Good morning. I, I do apologize. I, I just stopped by to let you guys know I'm being summoned to an internal meeting I can't dodge um, related to all the various and sundry goings on. So I will have to duck out here and for the next hour as well. No worries. Are we still on for our nine o'clock? 
We are. Cool. Excellent. Cool. Uh, in that scenario, I guess it'll just be the uh, the four of us. Yep. So, cool. So, uh, what do we want to talk about? Uh, let's other team members will also join. I think we can discuss the current progress, uh, what's going on on our side, at least. Sure. Denise, could you start sharing details about the DNS changes and uh, about the uh, uh, WireGuard stuff you're doing? Uh, yes, sure. Uh, by DNS, uh, I have provided uh, PR uh, for improvements uh, in the same DNS part. Uh, for example, uh, I have uh, started to use our external plugin for from uh, separate repo. Also, I have removed uh, an SM called DNS image from MonoRepo. And also, I have implemented a core DNS suggestion to use uh, forward plugin by default and use Fanout plugin for conflict resolution. And uh, PR uh, has been passed all tests, so please take a look. Um, I can uh, share my screen for. Uh, Yep, yep. Project board. Yeah, please, please do so. Oh. Um, do you see my uh, screen? Yep, see your screen. We can. Oh, oh nice. Uh, here is a PR. This uh, DNS uh, improvements. Oh. Sorry, it is an, an, another PR. <laughs> oh. uh, yeah, I mean, DNS simplification. This, I mean, uh -huh. this uh, PR. Yes, uh, you can. Uh, please, could I please remove the participants window. The participants um, for the Zoom. Oh, okay. <laughs> sure. Okay, thank you. Yep, and uh, also. So, in two but... words, at the moment we will use the both the fan out and the. Order. Plugins. If we don't, yeah, if you don't have uh, cross uh, configurations for DNS. Yes, uh, it is correct. Uh, okay. And it should work more uh, better than if we will use only Fanal plugin because of uh, Fanal plugin uh, doing uh, uh, upstream uh, requests in parallel. And uh, in most cases, it is not needed. Um, also, uh, I have uh, uh, worked with uh, uh, WireGuard uh, moving uh, into VPP. Uh, I did uh, simple steps. For example, I have created uh, a VPP plugin, <laughs> hello, hello world. <laughs> and also I, I have started uh, looking to WireGuard uh, Linux implementation. Uh, and that's all from my side. Okay, sounds good. Uh, so we few steps, I suppose, uh, in the direction to have a wire guard into the VPP. I hope the variant you looking at the moment will work. Uh, what else? Alexander is not joining today, but he's working on a new version of NS Manager based on the new SDKs. Uh, he in sync with me into this direction. Uh, we are uh, doing some diagramming to uh, not miss the stuff. Uh, we want to have in, uh, just a new NS manager. Uh, I'm at the moment uh, prototyping the uh, bidirectional streaming uh, and uh, writing a spec uh, to have a single socket for the NS manager so we can uh, use uh, just one server socket connection uh, without need for a workspace to do a 
just a client uh, request logic and for uh, most of uh, just uh, endpoints without the MIMIF. Uh, I've already have a prototype on the pure gRPC servers. So the idea is uh, at the moment, uh, every endpoint has a gRPC on a client socket. And uh, instead of uh, having additional mounted volume, uh, uh, idea is to use a just one bidirectional stream of a gRPC to pass all the uh, just pure gRPC calls back to the client. And uh, according to the, I uh, just implementing the gRPC client stream, uh, uh, client interfaces and stream interfaces, and just uh, forward all the packets using just one gRPC stream. All seems working. Uh, planned to provide a pull request uh, to review and the spec uh, later today or early in the morning tomorrow. So we can probably discuss it uh, and check if you guys, if this approach will work. In this case, uh, we could uh, dramatically simplify VNS managers because we will no, no need for a device plugin uh and the setup for the clients and endpoints will be much easier and clean because just one volume with just one server socket will be required uh what yeah, else that's... yeah actually i think uh, it, i have not find any solution similar uh, to what i wanted uh, in this area uh, it looks nobody was care about uh, this. Uh, if um, if you think that the solution is uh, is clean and uh, is useful to others, then we, we should consider uh, uh, in the long run perhaps uh, publishing some information about it for others to uh, to use. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. Could, uh, so at at the moment, actually, it will look very clean because it's like uh, just one. Uh, Go model with a protobuf file, uh, and uh, as before, you will create a two gRPC servers, but server uh, call, call network uh, activities only on the server instance of APIs. So if you want to call a client, uh, you just will need to using a callback uh, Go. Uh, API just call call one uh, one function and it will forward all the uh, gRPC calls back to client. So uh, from the Go and the code point of view, it looks very nice actually. Uh, probably I can. It's not not compiling at the moment, but I can show how it actually looks like. So. Give some hint. Do you see my screen? Uh, yes. Okay. So uh, what I do in, in this test, I have a server. For server, I just uh, uh, register a callback service. Callback service, it's just one service with one method with bidirectional streams, request and response. Uh, for requests, I have some uh, options like passing arguments and reply and type of requests and uh, on the client side uh, i do a client gpc server uh, for test i uh, register a network service on it and i do just one call callback serve and the server will be able to call for client so how it looks for a server. Server do uh, just a new client with identifier. Identifier could be a spiffy ID or pass it uh, authority. And it uh, looks like an absolutely normal uh, client connection interface, thanks to the latest version of the gRPC for, uh, for having two interfaces it make it possible actually. Before it was not possible. And I just do a regular 
network service client and do call. So from a code point of view, it looks absolutely as I'm calling uh, just a pure normal gRPC server. But the underline, it will be packaged uh, to the, this request stuff with invoke method. Or if I would like to create a new uh, stream, it will uh, has this request mode, a new stream, and uh, send the messages to and from. Based on my test, it works the same way fast. So at least for our scenarios for an SM, it should work, I think, pretty cool. Yeah, no, that, that makes a lot of sense. And so um, the only challenge that we may run into, uh, and it's easy to solve, is as people want to use more languages with NSM, like they want to bring in, uh, uh, let's say they have someone who does something in uh, in C or or uh, Rust or Python or so on, uh, we may want to, we may in the long run want to uh, write some of this stuff out just to make it very easy for them to to ingest and use. Uh, but yeah, um, it will be a problem. Yeah, you're right. Uh, that, that, that's that's the, that's the only thing. But it's it's it looks it looks easy enough that someone could write out because at the end of the day, you're still talking over pure gRPC. And yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just a matter of of creating the pattern for them, and it may even be possible. Uh, so on I, client side, I'm just reading the messages on a gRPC stream and do invoke. Actually, underline uh, at the moment for test, I've tested both. Uh, I'm creating a real uh, client gRPC socket on a file or on a TCP. Uh, for test, I do uh, it creating a socket uh, um, gRPC on a TCP to not clean the files uh, in the file system during the bug uh, and uh, so I just forward to a real gRPC server so probably uh, it could be uh, I don't know actually to create this kind of forwarders it's not so complicated actually so just implement all of these methods not so many of them if it will have clients on different languages, probably. Alternative is to have, uh, let me find a proposal, uh, to have something similar to this one. It's like if NSC do uh, register on NS manager and then do the same way, but having this uh, request and response uh, just in our network service manager APIs. Mm, but I'm not sure uh, if it's make it more clean. It will be easier to implement uh, for uh, different languages, of course, but not so uh, cool looking code uh, and easy, uh, easy to use. Yeah, no, I, I like the, 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 per, the previous approach that you showed me. And, um, you know, it's, um, if, if I, I think in the, in, if this is the direction we end up going with uh, in, the, in the long run, you know, we can we can work with the community to just put out the right set of libraries so that uh, it becomes easier for them to to use the bidirectional stuff, and it'll it'll definitely be useful for others because I know that it's one of the, the main problems people have with gRPC is that there's no real bidirectional uh, capabilities. No, no, it, it actually bind into the gRPC, but uh, it's just a stream. It's not. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's not, uh, it's easy to use. Uh, but with uh, API interfaces, uh, it's possible to use. Because I think, uh, I don't remember exactly uh, when this was introduced, but not so far away, I think, maybe two or three months ago. And before it was uh, just a client connection without uh, this uh, interface stuff. 
Uh, what else? I think we still have some stuff in the goal league area and uh, we're still working on some issues in the mono repo to understand uh, why sometimes pink is not uh, succeed uh, with uh, uh, this uh, Swedes approach. Mostly I think that's all from our side. Frederick, do you have some areas we can focus? Uh, yeah, so the things that are coming down the pipeline that, uh, that, I, uh, that I personally care about is gonna be focusing, there's some, um, so one of them was uh, uh, was on uh, trying to get WireGuard support in, in VPP. Uh, the second one that I that I was looking at is uh, trying to tr trying to get uh, uh, some more advanced uh, examples for Open Policy Agent uh, and and Spiffy interaction because uh, right now there's I, when I was looking at what's uh, available. The, we're able to make a decision based on uh, the last uh, token in the in the chain, the last element, uh, if I if I read it properly. And one of the things that we're going to be able to be able to do is to run policy that that traverses the whole uh, the whole chain for uh, for all Spiffy IDs that are in a in a given connection. And so, but I, I think the right way to approach it is we come up with a set of scenarios uh, for uh, the things that we expect to see uh, and with things that we expect uh, there to be policy on that uh, that uh, fits into open policy agent. And then we can use that to, to guide the next uh, set of changes in, uh, in open policy agent and its interaction. Does, uh, mm -hmm. th does that make sense? Yeah. So, for me, the that uh, the Spiffy and Open Policy Agent ones are uh, are the highest, uh, are probably the highest priority for uh, for the use cases that I'm that I'm seeing. Um, and so, yeah, and, and um, I'm, I'm going to see about setting up a call between you and me privately so we can go over some of this stuff uh, in, in detail uh, sometime. Uh, uh, in, a, in a day or two, uh, just just as a heads up, and we'll we'll go over all this. Uh, we'll go over all this stuff. Yep. Okay. Hey, Nikolai, we miss it you. I think. Uh, oh, hey, Nikolai. Yeah. Didn't Hello. see you join in. Yeah. Okay, uh, did anyone has something to say? Or we'll meet in a 10 minutes in a community meeting. Well, if we don't have any other main topics, then let's go ahead and uh, take a short break. Yep, see you in 10 minutes. See you shortly, thanks. See you.